How's it going, guys? So we have a medium difficulty question for endocrine. It's more about just one high yield point I want to communicate to you, followed by boom, it's the answer. Not going to be a long clip. I will make uh, a few tangential points, but for the most part, uh, this is just a high yield uh, arrow combination that students fuck up all the time. So uh, this is past level, okay? Despite it being medium difficulty, as I just fucking said. So before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Good video like, I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical. The link is down below. Find me on Telegram. Recently created a Telegram group and channel. Links are down below. Now let's start the clip. 24-year-old woman. Uh, she's not had a menstrual period for the past eight months. Menarche was at the age of 12. Cycles have been regular since. Two years ago, menses began occurring at irregular 40 to 80 day intervals before finally ceasing altogether. She has no past medical history, no medications, does not smoke, drink, or use drugs. She runs 10 miles daily and has competed in four marathons the past year. Her BMI is 17. Physical examination shows no abnormalities. Question just wants to know the most likely combination for her estrogen, luteinizing hormone, and follicle stimulating hormone levels. And as I said, it's not going to be a long clip. It's a factoid, okay? So the diagnosis is anorexia induced amenorrhea. This is also known as hypogonadotropic amenorrhea or central amenorrhea. Now, your factoid is that in patients who have anorexia, they're going to have low leptin levels. So leptin is the hormone that goes up when you consume food and it makes you feel full, okay? When you're hungry, in contrast, your ghrelin goes up and leptin is low. So in anorexia, we can assert reasonably that basal leptin levels will be low because she has low BMI and she's quote unquote hungry. Okay. Now leptin is required for normal GnRH pulsation. Okay. Why? No fucking idea. Okay. You just need to know that. So leptin levels are low. We get abnormal GnRH pulsation, and that leads to chronically low levels of LH and FSH in patients who have low BMI. And if we have low LH and FSH, the ovaries are going to be producing decreased estrogen. In addition to the fact that decreased adipose tissue overall, there's going to be decreased aromatization occurring peripherally where estrogen levels are low. Luminizing hormone will normally act on the theca interna cells of the ovaries to produce androgens. Follicle stimulating hormone will act on the granulosa cells to secrete aromatase. So those androgens from the theca interna cells are aromatized in estrogens from the granulosa cells, making estrogen in the ovaries, okay? So your factoid is down arrow for LH and FSH in anorexia slash low BMI and low estrogen. Now, in contrast, US simply wants you to know that you will have an up arrow for FSH in the setting of a primary gonadotropic problem. For example, Turner syndrome or premature ovarian failure or just physiologically in menopause, okay? So they might give you hot flashes in a woman who is 55 and they just say, uh, which of the following combinations reflects your diagnosis? And the answer is just up arrow FSH, down arrow estrogen, not hard, okay? And if they ask you for which hormone, just a singular one in isolation is most important for uh, signifying or denoting ovarian failure, uh, you're going to select FSH, okay? High arrow for FSH is more important than any notion of a down arrow for estrogen. Women can have uh, differences in estrogen levels, doesn't tell us anything diagnostically, but an up arrow for FSH tells you that the ovaries are not secreting, the granulose cells in particular are not secreting inhibin B, which normally feeds back to decrease FSH levels, okay? So you know the deal, I'm gonna continue to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel, and I appreciate your time, that's it.